Hello and welcome to the show. We are back on a Forza Horizon 3, going to be taking another vehicle around the Hot Wheels circuit. However, I do not know what car that is going to be because it is down to the uh, gods of Forza. We're going to go do a wheel spin. We're going to, well, we're going to do multiple wheel spins probably until I win a car. Whichever vehicle I am given here, assuming that it is uh, sort of capable and that it can get race tyres and still be an S1 class, that will be the vehicle that we are going to be building. Now my luck with wheel spins isn't exactly great, so we could be here quite a while trying to win a vehicle or not that long at all. Apparently it's going to be a Subaru, a Legacy RS, but I am perfectly okay with that. Well, we will go and grab the car and see what I can do with it. So, here is our vehicle. Starts off as a relatively high C-class car. Does mean we should have a fair amount, we have got a fair amount of, of upgrades that we can do. All-wheel drive can sometimes be a little bit of a problem in terms of PI. It tends to, uh, it tends to gain PI a lot quicker with, uh, with all-wheel drive cars. The plus point for the Legacy, well, it is very much within that, uh, the golden era for this series. Late 80s, early 90s is where pretty much all of the top cars, with the exception of the uh, Mazda MX-5, the top seven are all <laughs> from that uh, that era. So the Legacy does have that going for it. Ooh, race tyres immediately jumped us up into A-class. 255s, I imagine, all round on this. Indeed, it will be. Pretty decent. Pretty decent size of tyres. As much as I would like to have... Can we get... Oh, we can't get rally lights on it. This is a point. I was about to say, as much as I like rally lights, I do need to have the Forza downforce, but apparently we don't get rally lights um, anyway. Uh, maybe we'll get rally lights from the bonnet. I swear this car does get rally. There we go. That's what we want. Uh, there are lots of different options in terms of bonnet. And we want the helium lights, of course. Uh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Now, uh, handling bits. We're going to, of course, be wanting the brakes. We're going to be wanting race suspension. Wait, oh, come back. Weight reduction... Uh, I'm not sure what we want to do with this car. My concern, my real fear with the Legacy, oh, apparently we're going to jump over to this without meaning to, is uh, PI. Let's go for the sport weight reduction. We'll see what we can do power-wise. I, I don't think this can get a particularly... Let's go for the engine swaps. Don't think this will get a particularly crazy options. Oh, no, okay. Uh, yeah, we can put in the V8. Because I know the 2.0-litre flat 4 turbo isn't brilliant. The 3.3-litre flat 6 is that's the Subaru SVX engine, isn't it? Rather than the Porsche uh, flat 6, I think. Yeah, that would be with that power output. Neither of those two are particularly great engines. The Turbo Rally, neither. So we might have to go for the V8. Assuming that we can't get this to the top of S1 class with the standard engine, i will be very surprised if we could. We well, you know, PI in, in the lower classes just jump up relatively quickly. Like, we can get this into S1, but the difference between a low S1 and the top of S1 is actually quite massive. So, <laughs> I'm suspecting that this isn't going to... It's not going to... It's not hope in hell we're going to do it um, with that. So, I don't even think we put weight reduction on the car. I don't think it would do it. We will go for an engine swap. Whoopsie, continue working. We will go and grab... I think we have to go for the V8 on this one here. For that, uh, for that power, we are going to want as much of it as we can get. Ooh, do we go for turbos? Do we go for supercharger? Do we go for none of the above and keep it naturally aspirated? Uh, you know, we'll go for turbos this time round. We'll grab the turbos. We'll also go grab the weight reduction while we're here because we are going to have... Uh, ooh, we can actually do with this as well while I think about it. Gearbox, 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 gearbox. We need adjustable gear ratios. That would also be what's uh, hindering the PI slightly, but never mind. Uh, we could definitely have any more adjustable uh, ratios. You're never sure what you're going to get with the car from standard. Uh, handling is where we're going to next. Uh, yeah, it doesn't actually make a huge difference PI-wise, so we will go for it. The uh, Getting the weight out of the car is going to help it with the cornering. And, uh, well, we've seen time and time again, handling so very important around the Hot Wheels. Okay, this is really not doing much to the PI. I'd like to point that out. Interesting. Interesting indeed. We're getting a lot of power. This will probably become one of the most powerful all-wheel drive cars that we've had. Certainly, well, certainly the highest power to weight ratio. I say most powerful. You know, we've had things like, like the Regalia last time was over 700 horsepower. The Bentley and so on were all over 700 horsepower, but... They were also all over 4,000 pounds, and this is only 2,700. Big power to weight ratio in a car that's going to be able to use that power. That's quite something, actually. 
in this and we can get it up to i must have i must have missed something going through ah camshafts are what i haven't done a little bit uh, <laughs> so i must have missed something big as to why we weren't suddenly gaining enough power let's go and drop something else out of the car let's jump that down we're gonna have 800 horsepower in this 800 horsepower is a Hell of a lot. I might drop it down there as well, just so we can get things like flywheel and potentially drive line. It's a lot of power in an all-wheel drive car. Understeer might be an issue. It is a potential problem that we could come up against. But we will have we will hopefully at least have a lot of traction. A Subaru is ready. I think the Forza Gods have been very kind to me this time around. So it is off to the skyscraper takeoff circuit with our Subaru Legacy. I will have five laps to try and go as fast as possible. The target for this car is going to be a tall order. The Holden Commodore 132.8 was a mighty step forward in terms of lap speed. We were seeing a lot of cars going into the sort of low 34s, high 33s. And it was all getting very crowded in that area. And the Holden suddenly took a huge leap forward. And that might be a, it might be a tough ask for the Legacy. It certainly has got the statistics on this car's side. Good power to weight ratio, all wheel drive. Maybe slightly too smaller a tyres for my personal liking. But the all wheel drive should sort of cancel out some of the other troubles with those tyres. We shouldn't have traction issues, for example. Uh, oversteer should be minimal with a car like this. Uh, understeer is perhaps the bigger concern we might have for the vehicle. Oh, it can carry decent speed. I turned in a fraction too. I turned in a fraction too soon and clipped the inside wall. Probably bounced me a little bit wide. It seems like it's going to be okay though through that uh, that particular section. Straight line speed maybe not as good as I might have hoped from 800 horsepower. That was, what, I didn't actually quite, I'm going to get through these corners. I think it was about 167-ish. Might have hoped for a little bit more. But then you have got to bear in mind, while it is, you know, decent power, it's certainly not the highest power to weight ratio that we have seen. Um, you know, we've had cars with 1,000 horsepower with this sort of, uh, this sort of weight, in fact, a little bit lighter, I think. So, yeah, it's not going to have the greatest uh, acceleration of all time. I might have liked to have seen a little bit more. Uh, we are off the second boost pad quite nicely, though, at 206 miles an hour as we round the loop once more, hug the inside as we dive down for that extra little bit of gravitational assistance. 218 miles an hour from the Subaru. Slow it down for the final corners. What are we going to do for an opening lap? 35.8 from a standing start. This is quicker from a standing start than the uh, regalia was on a flying lap, but this has got more power than the regalia and is almost half the weight. Perhaps not so surprising. Into turn number three we go. Oh, there's that understeer. Tried to throw the car in and carry it flat out there. Not quite going to work. Just understeers its way a little bit wide. Oh, God. Through turn four, a similar sort of... a similar story, essentially. That's... Not the easiest car to uh, to drive through there, actually. Normally, I would say, ooh, that's a lot of understeer. That's a lot of understeer through these faster corners. I mean, I'm, I'm not a fan of an oversteery car. I never never like driving an oversteery vehicle. And certainly through turn four, when you got kind of got over the crest, we've seen quite a few cars that will oversteer their way out towards the, uh, towards the wall. In some regards, though, that's easier to drive than what I'm struggling with in this in this Subaru. Just the levels of understeer at some of these medium speed corners is a real bugger. You've really got to make sure you've got the car slowed down enough for some of these turns because it will just want to understeer its way. It's not so bad at that long banked turn, but some of the other corners we have to really watch out for in this uh, in this car. All right, Subaru, can we get another good run off of the boost pad? Yes, indeed, we can. Up to 208 miles an hour as we head around the loop once more. Not the quickest in a straight line, mind me. It's slower than the Dodge Dart, for example. The Dodge Dart was getting 220 miles an hour. Oh, we had a little bit of a lockup coming down there. That's a little bit on the scary side. We got away with it. Just a little kiss on the wall. Still another another scruffy, scruffy lap. Still in the 35s. I, I think a low 34 might be doable. I'm not sure a 33 is quite going to be on the cards. Although, again, I've said that about various cars and you suddenly find magic lap speed somehow turning too late for that corner. We're going to get a good run off of it, but no speed was really carried into the turn. Uh, yeah, I've thought about cars before, and then you suddenly set a magical, magical lap time. Uh, so it could be, could be possible once, uh, I say once we've got the hang of the car, you're kind of learning every lap. When you already have five laps to learn a, 
learn a car around a track every lap is going <laughs> hopefully you're going to be improving you're going to be learning more about what the car is uh, is capable of or in this case how far it's going to understeer when you try and throw it into corners with speed can we get 170 out of this before going on the brakes no it's 165 and i didn't break any later that was pushing my luck ever so slightly big lock up it's not what the greatest of brakes this legacy considering we're not carrying as much speed in some of these braking zones as other vehicles that have been braking at the same, if not a little bit later, point. So, yeah, brakes aren't amazing on this uh, on this vehicle. That was a fairly shonky line by me. <sighs> the plus point of the all-wheel drive being that instant traction out of all of the corners. Ooh, that's uh, okay. Okay launch over the pads. Not amazing, though. Yeah, the plus point of the all-wheel drive, of course, being the launch off, off the turns. Great at all, but we are struggling with a lot of understeer out of this uh, out of this car and we haven't seen understeer from the likes of the bentley the jeep uh there we go 34 3 it is into a, a relatively low 34 we might even be able to go faster than that or with uh, a good one might be able to get into the 33s despite it being a uh, quite difficult car to drive because we were still going to do exactly the same wrong thing at turn three we get away with it just that was very very close to being in a lot of trouble right there <laughs> i was pushing my luck a huge amount but we've got away with it this is another car that does not feel doesn't feel massively quick but it is potentially going to get the lap time a 34 a 34 3 is a good lap time regardless of whether we can improve upon it or not uh ah, it's the wrong gear around there we really need third gear coming off of that uh, corner we're gonna be terrible i think into here uh 162 not great it's an interesting one Ooh, statistically speaking yeah it does look quite good it's just the understeer the understeer that goes on with the car is a little bit i think to certainly to challenge the holden now we might be able to get it a smidge faster but i don't think ugh, i really really doubt we're going to be able to seriously get near the holden and the holden was uh, nicer to drive than uh, than this subaru bounce uh, a bit of a bounce on the landing but 209 miles an hour off of that boost pad is seriously good going as we hit i hugged the inside too much i, I went to the inside too early there which is uh, going to kill some of my momentum down here on to the brakes we go for the final call lovely through the final chicane right there uh, that was i think that was an even quicker lap i think it was in the 33 i think it was a mid 33 that might have even been a 33 5 i am not 100 percent sure we'll have to go frame by frame if we don't go faster of course on this uh, the final final lap because we are counting, you know, dirty laps will count on this, uh, in this series. I'm not deliberately wall bounce. There are a couple of places where you can wall bounce to, uh, make up lap time. I'm not, of course, doing that. So any brushes on the wall that I do are actually costing me, uh, costing me time around here. All right, let's get that better through there. We're a little bit slow on the apex, but we are neat. And I always know that we're going to be, we're always going to be slow on the apex there, I think, because we just don't have the grip. So I'll take being neat and tidy. Again, good exit down towards our crossover section. Be as late on the brakes as you dare. Get understeer, carted a little bit wide, but not too terrible. And then jump on that all 800 horsepower out of that uh, crossover section now let's try and not get i'm tending to try and go in oh, no, no 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 don't do that that's not what i wanted i was trying to go in high and then dive down low for the exit but i couldn't get the car turned we just carried a smidge too much speed into there which is not good can we get the mega run off the boost pad yes we can that's what we like to see 209 miles an hour from the legacy as we head up around the loop we go once more 194 195 miles an hour held it's a good run as well down towards the final quarter a little bit wide on the way in can't quite get out of the power as soon as i'd like it's a better lap though oh 34 1 34 1 on that lap i am not sure if <laughs> that felt like a better lap than the uh, the fourth lap but i'm not sure what the uh, time was for that fourth lap it could have been in the 34s could have been a mid 33 because it kind of flashes by so very quick and i've got to concentrate on driving the car ah that felt that felt better that final lap though i'm, I'm surprised i was meant to be a little bit quicker potentially but uh yeah, I guess I, uh, it was the running wide, I think, that did it. Turn before the jump. That was a, a big running wide moment. You can get away with kind of trying to get a good exit. That will have cost us a little bit of time. 
that's a difficult car to drive. It's a very, very understeery car, and uh, yeah, some of these, some of these medium speed, higher speed corners, it can be a real, a real handful getting the vehicle turned in. If it is the 134 uh, one that we have here that is its fastest lap time, that'll put the car into a ninth place. It'll beat the Ford Pursuit Ute as a fraction down on the Corvette Stingray or the Supra Mark III. If it was the previous lap that went quicker, then it'll be in whichever position it is on the screen. It's going to be, is, is it in the top 10? It's definitely going to be in the top 10. I mean, it is very much filling up this golden era part of the, <laughs> of the table. It is right in the, uh, right in the mix. There is some good lap speed. Again, it's another car that doesn't feel anywhere near as quick as it actually is going. Well, it is, yeah, very understeery through the turns. And it's not setting any blistering, you know, blistering acceleration speed zones, if you like. Overall, you put it all together, and there is certainly plenty of lap time from this uh, from this legacy, even though, yeah, not the easiest car to drive. I mean, I... <laughs> I tend to like understeery cars. I want vehicles to be very much planted on the road, and if the, the trade-off for that is a bit of understeer, I can deal with it. And if I'm saying this thing is very understeery, I imagine a lot of people would have a very tough time with the car such as this. But uh, there we go. That is going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.